Hey guys, Battle Axe is my ultimate blaster I've wanted for like years and years and I'm so excited to have it now but it's been quite a journey to get there so I kind of wanted to share with you guys what that journey was and then I'll finish off with an in-depth overview of the blaster. Right, so when and where did the need for this kind of blaster arise and kind of get stuck in my head? Well, I've been running HPA for a long time, just pump action. HPA is just awesome. Um, long range, really good and accurate for the high FPS games that we play. Um, but sometimes if the other team just has a whole load of auto strifes, they really can kind of suppress us. And then also say you want to run behind the team and get six people out at once, then it's kind of helpful to have full auto. So I realized I needed HPA and a strife, but kind of in a, in a more practical package. The problem is that um, at that time we only had spec species and so you kind of needed a pump at the front of your blaster and so there wasn't really space anywhere um, so I tried to do my own sort of semi-auto HPA blaster which you can see here uh, I didn't get that far and luckily soon after that the supercores came out so that led to my first rendition in BOB which stands for Battle of Britain Earth is a game we have in the UK, but this blaster essentially took a supercore at the back and the Boomco MA5 unit at the front. That was that Halo blaster that kind of takes the the Boomco clips and um, it runs off HPA as well. So I thought that makes sense for both of these units to both run off high pressure air. Um, so this guy had uh, select fire with this switch here, so this could do single, three round burst, or full auto. So this thing was really cool, I thought, um, went kind of for a gear up theme and uh, I used it for quite a while but I kind of knew that at the end of the day the ultimate goal would be to be to have something that used the talon mags at the back and the front so you don't have to carry two different types of ammunition. So next came Axiom. Um, more people have heard of this blaster I think and I just made it as a normal simple talon blaster I was kind of taking a break from the other stuff I was doing and then I realized oh there's a nice space up here to put the uh, Lepus blaster from Jackrabbit Nerfer and so I made a new shroud to kind of put that in and yeah this now allows you to have a talon mag blast at the front obviously the super core at the back and you can run around and just spray people um, this is really fun. It, it was actually very helpful, um, say when you're doing like attack the fort games, um, to kind of use your HPA blaster, hit people far away as you're trying to get closer, and then as soon as you run in, um, you don't do anything. You can literally instantly swap to full auto. You don't have to take a sidearm out or, or change anything. <laughs> That was really helpful, but I still kind of felt mm, it wasn't quite there. Um, it is a bit kind of chunky, it looks like it's put on as an afterthought, which it was. Um, so I was, I was happy with it, but I knew I, I still needed to do something better. So at that point, I just kind of got all the parts I knew I'd need the, the core, magazines, flywheel, battery, etc. And I just sat up with it all in CAD for ages. I was just sort of moving them around, trying to figure out an orientation that would work um, practically and not just have the whole thing be bulky. And I pretty quickly realized I just couldn't use the normal pushing mechanisms that we have. I needed to go for an entirely new one so it could kind of fit within my space constraints. Um, so I looked up some mechanisms and found um, one which basically has a rotating cylinder with a cam path inside of it which then kind of turns that into a reciprocal motion for the pusher. And so I thought, oh, this is it, because it can kind of, the whole thing can fit in kind of a long, narrow cylinder. Um, that's kind of the profile of it. And so that might work in a blaster. And I was trying to make this work as well for a while. And then I talked uh, to Adrian Kelly about what I was trying to do. And he had also been kind of working on something with that idea in, in a slightly different format. And he was kind enough to share that file with me. Um, and then from then on I kind of modified it a little bit until I made um, something that would work for me. So yeah, I need to give a massive thank you uh, for Adrian Kelly for kind of starting me off 
um, with his um, uh, with his design, uh, which then allowed me to make my thing work. So here it is, Battle Axe. Love this thing. Essentially my, uh, my kind of goal with this was to never be in a Nerf game again and think, oh, darn, I wish I'd brought that other blaster that could do that other thing that I would really need right now. Um, so no, this can pretty much do, do everything that at least I need in a Nerf game. So I'll start at the front. Up here um, we can see that we have the HP bar at the top and then the kind of flywheel system down here at the bottom. And really conveniently, um, if you use hurricane wheels, um, the spacing between the, the motors is just enough to fit our, our HPA barrels between. So that kind of kept the whole thing very compact. And also, I wanted this to be like high performance, so I've gone for a dual uh, stage cage, so that should be able to hit like 180, 190 FPS um, with these things. Although, I need to test that, because I've got four Merlins in here, so maybe it would be better. Um, so then coming down here, this is the front kind of magwell. I'll just pop one in. There we go. So um, it's a straight feed um, with slightly angled mag. We've done those in the pistols before. Um, and then here we've got magazine release, which you can hit um, with your finger while you're holding the blaster. And then kind of inside the blaster in this whole area, that's where I've got the, the new pusher mechanism it's just kind of riding in there. The whole thing is very compact, there's not a lot of room on the inside. Um, but yeah, the way I have this set up is that the bottom trigger here, um, clicking that basically will fire fire the blaster here. And what, what I've put over here is a select fire switch, um, so you can go semi, three round burst, or full auto. Um, and again, basically you just click the trigger and everything that needs to be done is, is sorted for you in the code. So you know, um, waiting a certain amount of time for this to rev up before you then start the pusher. Um, it's got cycle control, so it knows when to stop and, and all of that. Um, yes, yeah, so it's probably a good time to mention that this is all running off a Naftuino, uh, which made this a heck of a lot easier, um, especially um, it having the FETs on board um, to run something like a pusher motor already. Um, that's really handy. So got a nice kind of name tag there. Um, then moving backwards, um, it's as you can see was developed from Axiom, so we've still got the same um, release here. Um, jam door that can open up and super cool. But I had to carry a, a much larger battery um, because I'm, I'm running <laughs> four Merlins as well as just the uh, solenoid valve. So I kind of moved the solenoid valve down here, and just underneath the core here, is, I basically made room for a, a larger battery and I got rid of the um, sling attachment point so I've got this little hole in there which basically takes one of those um, quick disconnect uh, sling points so you can shove one of those in if you want. But um, it would be a pain to take the whole blaster apart to um, get to where the battery is now so what you can do with this nice back piece is you can slide this up and then you'll be able to unplug the LiPo battery and have access to that guy and, and charge it all and then that can slide back on. I've made it a bit tight because obviously you don't want that coming off in the middle of the game. But also I thought, oh, you know, if this is my, my ultimate blaster, I've got to add a screen, obviously. So I've got the screen up in there. And if I switch the blaster on here, there we go. It starts by telling you your LiPo voltage because that's useful. And then um, <laughs> it's already got 15 on it. Yeah, so I basically got the ammo counts for both of the sections of the blaster, and then bottom there you can see it says semi, burst, and auto. So it's also tell you what mode you're in. So yeah, that's pretty much all I needed on there. I just wanted nice big numbers. Um, I'll I'll put into three round burst and pull the trigger. There you go. That works. Uh, semi. <laughs> Sorry, it's pretty loud. Um, but the uh, motors are on PWM, 
So in the code you can actually change uh, what kind of what FPS you want those to shoot at. And uh, also for me in, in the UK, um, we're not legally allowed to have our HPA blasters uh, fully automatic. Um, it's just the laws we have here. Um, but if you're in a place where you can do that, um, you can redo the code so that your select fire switch uh, relates to the HPA. Um, HPA is over here, um, instead of the flywheel. Um, and you just leave that full auto or something like that. So you've got some nice options. All right, firing demo. I'll turn the blaster on. Uh, something I forgot to mention is that uh, it's constantly checking the LiPo voltage anyways. And so if it gets to the point where you need to stop using it and charge it, it will uh, freeze the blaster and kind of give you that notification. But anyways, let's pop some mags in. Got switches in each mag, so that will tell it when the mag's in, obviously, to go to 15. Oh, it's a bit loud. Let's go.